So you're telling me we should start we should start offering homeowners a a keg? Yeah, we'll get you a pony keg with your purchase. Get you a keg. We're doing that, PVC and texting, so we're diversifying a little bit. Um, Think what else? Well, one thing we're going to add, but I'm trying to do one thing at a time, is live transfers from the cold callers. So um, it'll probably just go, I have to figure it out, but it'll probably go into some sort of pool. And one of you can has to try to pick it up. And whoever picks it up, picks it up, right? But those things come at random time. So. That's going to be a, a big difference for us not getting people off the phone. Um, but I have a couple other things I'm going to add, but not all at once. So, yeah. I was going to ask, did you see that uh, uh, Stephen texted you? Do you remember him? Stephen Perlow? Yeah, I saw he texted me. I haven't gotten to it yet. It was about a deal, right? Yeah, we. I locked that up when I was out in Houston. <laughs> and remember, he was like the one that was pissed off when you spoke to? Because you like backed out. Oh, yeah. He was like, oh, he came back to five. And it's, I think it's the same problem, too. The same one? Yeah. I don't remember that app. Yeah, you got it. You got mine. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, it is the same property. What do we lock it up at before? Oh, 300 now? Yeah, he wants 300 now? Yeah, he wants 300. Or best offer. Yeah, because I was looking at it. I think we were way too high on that before. Yeah. I think we needed to be at like 300, right? Because we got an offer at like what we were at or a little bit like under. Let me see, two, four, two, one. Two, four, two, one, two. Two, five. And originally he was asking 375 for K for that property. Jesus. So Said it sold for three twenty in April twenty twenty two. But he texted us today, right? Or oh wait, days? hold on, wrong address. One of it sold, not the. Yeah, I just looked. Now that one hasn't sold yet, but no. there is like. Surrounding area pretty trash. Yeah. A few that sold at 3.7. Yeah, they're both sold at 3.7. they're both the same price, sometimes they're bought together, too. So gotta look out for that. Yeah. That's kind of a weird area. Probably not worth it. Yeah, agreed. Probably why it came down so much. I'm gonna offer it to He wants 300 now, he's not even listed it. But he wants, maybe I should offer 200. <laughs> I mean, that's always worth a shot. I'll buy it if, it's for, if I can get it for 200. Dude. So the company doesn't want it, but let me talk to you man to man. <laughs> How do you feel about letting go? Tell him, tell him two hundred in the case of Bush. Oh, Dad. Like 
like, have you seen those TikToks about the dude that goes, he's like the Canadian dude, he goes out and he just low balls the fuck out of people on Craigslist for their cars, but he always adds in a case of beer and they pretty much say yes every time. I did not say that. I've seen that guy. Dude, he's so full on, like, they only like 800 bucks. He's like, well, it's a shit box, you know, I'll go, you know, let's do 200 in a case of beer. And they're like, fuck, buddy, that's low, but a case of beer? <laughs> so you're telling me we should start we should start offering homeowners a a keg? <laughs> yeah, we'll get you a pony keg with your purchase. Get you a keg. Oh. I lock them in, dude. I lock them in. Well, I just decided to join the meeting because I got. I'm just waiting on something, so you got to do what you need to do. But. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, Vic, good shit. I'm getting that one on fucking Friday, dude. Did anybody have anything that they wanted to go over? Did you take a look at Vic's uh, uh, this morning? Did he send one today? Yeah. 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 Well, what do you think? I mean, I'll look right now. Did you push that one over to whiteboard, Victor? Because I don't see anything. <clears throat> Otherwise, we don't see it. But we did get Investor Lift today, so a whole new Dispo software. So I'm pretty excited about it. Really, that's dope. Try to help us. Uh, is that the one Brett Daniels endorsed this? I don't know, but it's like the new software. He, I'm sure he promoted it, but so they just they just bought this last year, Vic. Uh, no, they've been in there for years. I do they refinance? No, that's yeah. not it. That's a cop. That's a Are they updated in the kitchen at all? Yeah, they renovated the house, has new roof, new HVAC, new flooring, cabinets. And he says there's like a lot of things here that the property needs for that to be. Oh, these are old pictures. The black cabinets are old? Yeah. So he was like, because I, I low, did lowball him. Like, I was like, I can do 200, like, you know, for this. Yeah, he's like, honestly, he's like, it doesn't sound too bad. He's like, but if you really want me to get you to sign something, like, I need to be at two point. And I was like, okay, well, let me, let me see. I'm going to speak to our finance team, see what we can do. And if we can do a two point, I'll give you a call back so we can go over the point. He's like, that works for me. Oh, thank God she's on this little Johnson. I thought she was on the main road out there. No, she, yeah, it's like a little street. One, two, three, you're like the only ones. Um, yeah. Uh, Look at that one for 302. Look at the picture. Ah, uh, how far away is it? The other ones are all far as fuck. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, I mean... I'm not, I wouldn't even consider the 302, probably. Uh, it's 2019. Yeah, it's a new That's what hurts it. Yeah, these ones, this one's close. Uh, depending on what that shows in here. What was the square foot? 1441. It could honestly be a little bit higher since he did put some work in it. It could be a little bit, yeah. but I would say conservatively. Yeah. Since you don't have any comps that have sold recently, I would say 250, like 255. Yeah, it'd be oh, safe, yeah. Oh, I hate when this thing doesn't load. It takes a minute for it to calculate. Sometimes it's immediate for me. No, for mine it takes like a huge minute. Yeah. yeah. It's sometimes it's immediate, sometimes it fucking doesn't come through for now. Yeah. But, so, 210, 7, is what this gives you. 
So, I mean, considering, like you said, it's a new roof and HVAC, that's good. That helps us. Um, well, uh, did I you mean, check to see if there's any hedge funds? It sounds like there? we're looking at a cosmetic rehab. Did, uh, did you ask, like, the? I fucking absolutely love that. What if I gave you a check for 30 grand a day? Did you ask him that? No, I didn't. I will, dude, I love that one. I just tell people, like, this is an easy way to think about it because you know the house better than I do. Like, well, if I give you 30 grand right now, where would, what would you put that into? They always will fucking come up with shit that they didn't want to tell you about before. It's actually a great way to ask people that shit. Unreal. Um, so you offered, you said 200, and she said, I need 220 to say yes right now? Yeah, it's, so it's her uh, son's property, which I actually yeah. spoke <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but he was like, I, would just, I would come back right there. I would say, look, like I, I sent it to the finance team. They actually really like the house. But, you know, without pictures, just kind of right off the bat, they wanted to be at like 200, but I know that wasn't where you guys wanted to be. Tell them they wanted to be at like 2025 or something. I'd be like, look, I fought, I fought with them. I know you guys wanted to be at the 220. The highest I could get them to come up to was like 209.5 or 210. So like you could let's give them 210 five. And I think that would be I think that would be a pretty solid deal if we locked it up at two ten. Victor, why did you get off the phone on this one? Just curious. Um, I I wanted to see what you guys thought just because there was like I looked on Zillow, there were some comps that were like super low. So I thought two twenty was low key overpriced. And then I had asked in the chat and then he was like, I think that's low key so, you know, in my opinion, why didn't you put them on a hold as you're going to the finance department and come and ask one of us? what it is. I, I, I have no idea. I should have done that though. Yeah. <laughs> Any opportunity we have to talk with a homeowner is a fucking blessing, right? So yeah. you ever get somebody off the phone, we're just doing ourselves an injustice and making them go back and probably justifying a higher price in their end. So the whole reason we do those breaks is not just to listen. It's if we really, I mean, we're those times or when we're coming up with our offer, but as Devin is saying, in this situation, like, if you guys want to, I forgot what the script, I know I put it in there, but if you, if you guys aren't still using the idea of, like, if you're asking what you're looking to get, um, say you're, if, if you guys aren't still saying the idea of, like, what other investors are buying for in that neighborhood, use that pricing, like, we're just using that as a price anchor. If I, if I were you in that situation, I'm seeing other investors are buying, buying around 160 to 190 in that neighborhood, you're gonna probably come back, go on your on your pause, um, and then go calm, and then probably you're gonna come up to 180, another break, 191, break, two, 2025, like Devin's saying, right? The whole yeah. idea is, the, I would say the more, the more times we could put somebody, and I, I met this guy at the conference, I think I told you guys this one time, but, the real negotiation doesn't start until you're probably in like three or four pod, uh, uh, hold. He said he'll, he, I was, he was saying to me, and I didn't even ask him, but he said he'll go on holds six or seven times. One, not to get the seller off the phone, but two, to show that you're really fighting for it. And so when you're, when you're on that like, when you're on that like fourth hold, because at the end of the day, it's, being on a hold after like two, three times is fine because they know you're just going back to the department. The more times you do that, the more times they're probably going to believe you're actually going back. I would say that it, that's like a double-edged sword for me. I get about a 50-50 shot whether or not they're like, okay, I'll wait. On the phone, it's a little bit easier. That way we're not playing phone tag or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but. I, tried. I guess it, did, it wasn't as bad like in the beginning, but recently that's why I'm getting Something that... Something to think about is, do you find that those people that want you to call you back never turn into something good? Because I would say that we qualify. The, the, the guy that I signed last week, he said call me back. Okay. Because in my, yeah, I would think. I would say it's a better chance if they will wait for sure. Yeah. But sometimes okay. people are just like, oh, no, just call me back. It's fine. If you need a minute, it's okay. Like, I'm having work. You know, I can keep doing my shit. Call me back in five minutes, ten minutes. Okay. I mean, so, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, just thinking of that perspective, like, all right, yeah, no, especially so, when they're at work at the office, I'm like, okay. But it's kind of like a situational thing. Maybe, like, if you know yeah. they're at home and just chilling, the, the, the way the second thing maybe works, but yeah. I feel like it has been when people are at the office, they're like, well, I'm not going to be busy right now, like, just call me back in 10, 20 minutes or whatever. That makes sense.
And so maybe when you're trying to call him back, then you're trying to go on a pause or whatnot, or the second time that you're calling him back, and then they'll understand. But he was saying that like when he starts getting into like four or five holds, the first two holds, nobody's really talking about the price, but when you're going back and trying to negotiate with the finance department, that's when they start to really talk about that price if they have a spouse of presence or whatnot or whoever, maybe they're just talking a lot, I don't know, probably not, but if you guys have the opportunity to put somebody on four to five, obviously not like people that Devin are talking to, people you can't do anything about, but if you have the opportunity, keep putting them on pause. And even if it's four or five minutes, that's fine. If But if like in your situation, Victor, just say urgent on the phone with somebody, I'm sure Eddie, Michael or Devin would help you real quickly. So just try not to get people off the phone in my opinion. That's especially why we're gonna move into doing live transfers with cold calls. So, and especially when we're adding texting as well, these people are gonna be need to be called real quick because we're getting them as soon as they pretty much confirm that they want to sell something onto a phone call and into our system. And they expect a call from us, which is a little bit different than the phone call because we're not going to go say, okay, our team member will be calling you here in the next 24 hours. Like, all right, can I shoot you a call? And then we're going to put in the CRM, right? So um, if you guys ever have the opportunity to get spend as many time, uh, spend more time getting fresh leads as they come in, I guarantee we'll have a higher pickup rate. So I know we want to leave those for power hour or whatnot. Power hour is still going to be a thing, but if we can, if you see one come in, even if it's not good, do me a favor, give it a call. Even if it's not good on the numbers wise, just at, at least just mark it dead or something. So, um, but just so you guys know too, like Devin and Victor, we're, we're, we're going to all in-person appointments now in Houston. Any lead that wants an offer, we're sending an appointment. So you guys need to, to come to you guys or you guys to go to them? We're going to go to them in their local Houston. Because I, I truly, from what I've learned too, is a lot of the big players, one, one, one is that they're only really going to, like people doing like three to 500 deals a year. Some of them are only doing one market and that's their lo local market. And two, logistically, which I thought was fascinating, they're only doing in-person appointments. Now, if they need to do virtual, they will, but these in-person appointments, they say, they can just, if you can sit somebody, they can't hang out the phone on you when you're in the person, right? And also, where did 90% of our problems come through? It's people not trusting us because they don't know us. That's obviously, that's 90% yeah. of the problem. You get in front of them and you meet them, what are you gonna say? John, I met you last week. What are you, I'm not fucking up. Yeah, that's exactly. And if we can get somebody at the kitchen table I know we're gonna have to we're gonna face that struggle with Eddie and uh, Michael for the first couple of getting comfortable being able to do that and make a low ball offer in person, but is what it is. I mean now we can really yeah, leverage it'll, how it'll crappy in for sure. but at the same time we can leverage this is not a cosmetic rehab. I mean we're gonna probably have to fix this and you're walking them through the home and whole time we're gonna be trying to use things to mentally lower their price as we're going through that appointment but um yeah, so that's gonna help even just as far as like them realizing where your price is coming from yeah like you said just being able to be like look like exactly this, so. this and this is exactly why we you know i just i just messaged the team like as far as the house goes you know we had top condition we probably could offer this 224 but i'm looking you know this 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 is going to need for a bigger place they came back at 202 so, yeah so, so if you guys and I'll, I'll figure out some sort of pay structure but essentially I want you guys to be lead managers Victor and Devin just for the Houston ones I mean we don't get a ton of them but a few that we do that are qualified obviously I still want you to qualify them but just don't go into price and anything crazy beyond that just set the appointment I'm not even gonna lie yeah. I prioritize the non-Houston ones because I know that these two dudes get they can comp them better. They know the area better. They know the houses, yeah. like the market, what the neighborhoods are like. like. I know they just know Houston better. So I'll, I'll get them, I'll grab them, but like, yeah. I've gotten very good with the Florida and the Georgia market. So I'll, I'll prioritize those because I know these two would yeah. definitely have like a, 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 a step up on me with those ones for. Yeah. And just for to sure, give you an idea, I, I mean, there's about a, 
I'd say there's about a 75% chance in the next three to five months that we're going to only be doing Houston and probably Dallas. Really? So, yeah. Um, Dipping out of the George Johnsons. Yeah, man, I, 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 I've had an enlightening, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've been awakened. I, I've been awakened. So, yeah, we're just causing problems when they don't need to be when there's deals right in our backyard, in my opinion. So I, I, I agree. There's deals yeah. all over the place, that's for sure. Yeah, um, so, but... Yeah. Anyway. I think I think it was great doing Georgia and stuff when you had Tiber like it's such a solid buyer. But now that we're you're just building that dispo list and we're you know marketing it to so many different people. Yeah, fuck it, dude. It's, we got to lock stuff up like way under ARV anyway. Now it's not like we're buying it twenty thirty k under and just selling it to Tiber. Like, yeah, just to give you guys a, a, a buyers at the prices that we're locking stuff up now. To give you guys like a good general benchmark, if you like don't believe in like that formula, they're like this just doesn't seem right. We should probably be locking things up at about eighty percent of the ARV right now. So if all yeah, else fails, point like- eight times your ARV and yeah. that because I know sometimes I, I've seen them and they're like. How does that add up, right? Because sometimes I'll have crazy big square feet or whatever. But a cosmetic rehab is about 80% right now. And I, I, that, I'm just saying that to tell you that we would be comfortable dispoing it. Like, is that, I mean, we're, we're trying as hard as we can right now, man. It's, we're just, we just locked up all these things where at the same time, things changed a lot and we're having a tough time and people are limiting what they want to buy. And I'm like, trying to back out on shit and it's just kind of messy. So it's not, a, it's not your guys' fault that, but we just have to learn and be quicker at it next time, I guess. And that's on me not realizing it, but no. it's not crashing. I mean, that's, but. Gonna, that's gonna happen with a big market shift, man. The market's changed so fucking much. Yeah, And like exactly. literally in like the last two months, the market just totally shifted. Exactly. And so I've seen a little bit seller expectations change a little bit not a ton obviously some people are like oh prices are still going up well take that for what you will but in the end of the day don't try to don't try to make a deal that's not there even if it like i i, I really don't want it, you guys to fight for like five 10k deals anymore like yeah i'd rather you guys get one 50 40k deal than three 15ks it's just going to save yourself time um, yeah. and, and energy and then you're not having to follow up with people that you're trying to fight for 5k over if they don't like use the whole idea of price drop or the investors are buying for and then just use our, our script with going back to the investors and coming up from there but if, if in the end of the day I'd rather you guys not keep going up on price than just trying to keep follow up because that's one thing I, I don't know how we've always lacked and I kind of did it when I was in acquisition just as me is 60% 60 to 70% of deals should be coming from follow up but that's not really what we're I haven't looked at stats or anything but it just doesn't feel like that it feels like most of them come from fresh and that's just a test to our follow up process and so with the new CRM I, I think that's going to be a lot easier but I got clapped on a follow up this morning yeah. we were looking at top, buying it from this dude like four months ago for like 200 to 210 yeah he's got it listed at 325 yeah so i'm sure it's gonna sit there too a little bit because you probably price it, it. Will. the arv was like 250 like there's no fucking money that much but but just keep that in mind with follow-ups going forward is instead of keep going up hold your ground at a price that is probably not your top dollar and I'd rather you wait to give the top dollar after like five follow-ups, um, just as like a mentality shift wise. So yeah, um, that's what I'm literally doing with the dude that wouldn't sign because his lawyer wanted us to redo the contract. I yeah. just keep hitting him up like, "When are you gonna sign my contract?" Dude? Really? <laughs> yeah. Please, <laughs> you don't need that fucking whole thing rewritten. Please yeah. just sign my shit. I mean, if you really want to give him a notice, send him a new contract with a less of a price, with a lower price. Man, Mark is changing. Sorry, I mean, that'll get a good really, really fuck him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll, 
He'll be like, oh shit, and because yeah, it might it might get him to. He hasn't responded. I gotta get it back on the phone, but I keep just I keep just texting and, and leaving it voicemails, and being like, dude, like I want to work with you, man. We fucking use this contract all the time. So yeah. What can I do? What can I do without my boss having to rewrite the entire contract we use multiple times a week? Yeah. That's a lot of bullshit out there right now, but a bunch I'm of bitches. Telling hey, you. when everybody's fucking house crashes and the market of homes goes down like forty percent. Yeah, we'll you wouldn't we'll you wouldn't trouble. believe how many people I met at this con. These, this is a conference where everybody does at least like fifty deals a year, so they're multi six figure companies. But I'd say seventy percent of people don't have a single hedge fund on their on their buy on their head on their buyer sheet. And what yeah. is that? and it's not that what doesn't surprise me if they don't have hedge funds. So what surprises me is that they're locking properties up at sixty percent all day, and they're still doing eight to ten deals a month. So just put that in perspective. I know it's, but it's a couple of things, right? It's obviously the right person in the right seat, but two, the right follow-up process, and three, just kind of holding your ground, right? So I'm just trying to simplify our process a little bit right now, but you guys keep doing what you're doing. Um, and it, uh, you guys are more than happy to be communicated with if you guys haven't introduced yourself to Bladen. I know he's reached out. If you have any questions, like he probably knows more about prices than me. So if you're like, even especially if you're like comping something, you're like close on a price, especially like you, Victor, on that one. I yeah. if, if nobody's answering, go to Bladen because he's on his computer 24 seven. Go to Bladen and be like, hey, like I'm thinking about locking this up. What do you think? He knows the buyers better than anybody anybody on this call right now. So um, he's always a good extra tool to use in your back pocket if you just don't know. Because um, all he does is sit in that sheet and look at what people are buying them for. And he's, he's the one getting all the offers now. I don't even look at them now. So, um, but he's got a good process. So if you guys ever want to go and whiteboard and see like, okay, what if you want to see like what the market's doing, go and see some of your the past deals, even their year, years or not, and see what offers we're getting. Because he'll put any offer we get, whether it's good or bad in there. Um, even if they say not even to make an offer, that'll tell you something. So um, yeah, hopefully that gives you guys a better idea of what to go do going forward. But Bear with me, we're adding a couple of things, but I'll, I'll keep you guys updated as we do it, so. Um, you guys have any questions for me? No, sounds good, man. All right, well, I gotta get on this call. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Peace. I'm with Ovation Equity, how you doing today? Hey, Michael, doing all right over yourself? I'm doing good. Hey, I believe you spoke to one of my associates by the name of Mark in regards to that property on uh, on uh, Chardon Way. Uh, you got a minute? Uh, I do. Okay, awesome. I just want to confirm a few things and uh, just to see if it qualifies to be put in our portfolio. Is that okay? You bet. Awesome deal, awesome deal. So, I mean, as far as, you know, Tell me a little bit more what you were looking to do with the property, man. Do you have a sort of timeline you were looking to sell it by? No, we don't. Uh, we're actually moving in a lot of calls out of the blue. I've uh, taken some of them. There haven't been any offers that have really you know, interested us. Gotcha. gotcha. So I entertain them uh, and we can talk about it. But again, yeah, no, nothing's really entertained us that much. Uh, we know the market, you know, we know what's going on on the other side. If we sell, we're going to have to buy. So it's not like. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And you did say like you will entertain prices. I mean, our offers. I mean, if there was an offer that entertained you, I mean, would thirty to ninety days be something you would be willing to work with? Yeah, I think it would be closer to ninety, but yeah, ninety days. We would be willing to entertain something. Got it, got it. Awesome deal. And I mean, as far as you know, the condition of the prop uh, of the property, how is it? Uh, I would almost call it immaculate. To be honest with you, we've renovated a lot. We put about I don't know, 50 grand into the house since we moved in out of pocket. Oh, wow. Uh, um, except for the uh, HVAC unit, which is fully transferable to the next owner, but it's on a payment plan for five years. It's $6,000 and it's $100 a month, no interest. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, brand new AC unit? Uh, brand new AC unit, brand new roof uh, as of. 
2020. So we just renovated the shower, the master bathroom. Uh, we put new garage doors, high-end motors. Uh, it has a new refrigerator. I'm not trying to do everything. It has a new front door, two storm doors, two back door. Uh, the fence in the back yard is put up. The yard that we put in, along with drainage, uh, $10,000 investment there. So, yeah, we put a ton of money in the house. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, it sounds like a very, I mean, because what we typically do is, what we do is we, uh, we typically put them on our rental portfolio. So we'll buy them all cash and, you know, no closing costs to you or anything. And, uh, you know, and we typically, we put it as a, you know, a rental property. Um, and with that being said, I mean, is there any rental restrictions in that area? No, the neighborhood doesn't have it. I can tell you definitely the, uh, not that the neighbors can do anything because they just voted to turn down a POA uh, recently last year. Uh, but no, there's not. The neighbors don't like the rental association coming in, but I mean, even a rental association such as, I think they're called Excalibur, came in a bought like five or six homes recently and they're all rented out now. Uh, uh, there's gotcha. absolutely no restrictions in the neighborhood currently. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You and might face that down the road. I'm not, <laughs> not going to lie to you, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, anything changes, right? I mean, we've had, a, I have HOA in my area, and at first what they did was they, they told us, oh, there's going to be rental restrictions, and the next thing I know, there was like two or three houses near me being rented out, and I was like, well, well they just kind of disregarded what you just said. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, to me, like, this sounds like a perfect, you know, this is something that would qualify to be put in our in our portfolio. I mean, do you mind if I put you on a quick hold and maybe see if it, you know, if it does qualify and maybe I can give you an offer? You can. You can put me on a hold. That's fine. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to go run back to my finance team and see what they come back with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, hmm. I mean, to me, it looks like, you know, we would have to be at around you know, lower than 400, just based on some of these comps. Um, you know, this one shows about 1600 square feet. I think we're about 18. Oh, we're about the same size and about the same, same amount of bathrooms. So it looks like I would have to probably be around maybe three, 340, um, which I think would be a fair offer just because this house, you know, looks kind of updated and, um, you know, I think 340 would be a good price for both parties. So I'm going to shoot him that offer and see what he says. And, you know, if it's if it's something he likes, he's probably not going to even entertain it. He said he hasn't been entertaining anything. So he doesn't sound, you know, really motivated to kind of sell it. So I think I'm going to just hit him with with 340 and see what he says. But I'm pretty sure he's going to say no because said he's gotten other offers that haven't even caught his uh, his his interest so let me see what he says uh, but it is completely updated so that's a good sign um, but let me see what he says hello David uh, yep, I'm here. hey David so I do have some good news um, they actually did approve me um, they did say that they're very interested in the property. Um, I did have a couple questions. They wanted to see, you know, is there a certain price range that, you know, would entertain your, you know, would entertain you guys? Or, um, you know, what where, where were you kind of looking at as far as price range? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have to be at the upper 400s and right around the 500 mark to get there, to get up there at least. Okay, gotcha. At the moment in the current market. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. So let me see what else they said. So we have, I told them the roof is brand new AC units, brand new. Um, and there is an HOA in that area. They just wanted me to verify. That is correct. There is an HOA in the community. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to be right back. Uh, you know, I did have, that's all they wanted to really know. And they're going to give me an offer right now. So I'll put you on a quick hold. And, and, let, and let me just mention real quickly before you go back to them. Yeah. Um, you know, anything that you run by me, I can't say yes or no to right now. But 
I am married. Yeah, yeah. Work, hey, man, I I get it. That's a the, <laughs> you don't you don't want to make the wife upset either. You don't want to do anything without talking it through. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let them know that yeah, you can't make a decision. You know, at the moment. So uh, they're just gonna give me an offer, and if you like it, you can discuss it with your with your wife, and we can kind of go from there. Okay. Good. All right. Give me one second. Oh, he's definitely not going to take the 340, which is where we probably would have to be. That's sucks. He wants to be in upper 400s. <sighs> These people. That's what happens when we're in a buyer and a seller's market. Seconds. Multitasking. <laughs> Texting and, and on calls. Replying back to text. Hello? I'm still here. Hey, so I did talk to my finance team. Um, they were saying they wanted to be you know, they wanted to be in that 350 to 360 range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that's way too low. Definitely not the same ballpark. Okay. All right. Well, um, you know, I appreciate the talk. And, you know, if anything further down the line, if something happens, if I could try to get them in the, somehow get them in the upper 400s, uh, I'll definitely give you a ring and, you know, we can discuss more about it. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks, David. I appreciate the time speaking to you, and uh, you have a good rest of your day and a good weekend, all right? You will. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. God, these people. They just... Tough. Tough. I don't think it was even worth 400. There's nothing in that area even selling close to upper 400s. 405, 412, 405. I mean, that's not even the same. Like, where were we here? And he wants four upper 400s. There's no way. And this house has been updated. There's just no way. There's no way you could get upper 400, even if you listed it. The market, maybe, I mean, look at that, 446, but it's almost 300, 400. Well, no, it's almost 600 square feet bigger there's just no way so yeah i don't see it I see it being uh, a deal at all